Hey, what's going on everyone? Garrett here. Welcome back to another video. My apologies for not having it out on Wednesday because it's now Friday. I have some family stuff going on. So there also might be some delay in next week's video as well, but we'll see. So anyway, in this one, we're going to be going over build context, which is something that I've been talking about wanting to do for a couple weeks now. And finally, I feel comfortable enough to go over what it is, how it works, and an actual really common gotcha that I wasn't even aware of until researching everything for this video. So the first question is, well, what is build context? So it's kind of what it sounds like, but it's also less than what it sounds like, I guess, at least to me personally. Build context is simply the way in which we can get information about where our widget is in the grand scheme of our app. So what does that mean? Well, not, and not we personally. I mean, yeah, sure, we can get it, but it's the way that the widget gets its information. So context, which is more information about what's going on around you, is basically your widget's way of getting information about itself. So let's say, for example, um, in terms of us as people, let's say that we, our friends take us and they say to us, okay, we want to surprise you. We're going to send you somewhere. You're not going to know where it is. And you're already in a city that's away from home, so you don't necessarily really know the area. So your friends say to you, okay, we're going to get this Uber for you, we're going to blindfold you, we're going to put you in the Uber, you're going to go somewhere, we're not telling you where. You get to the town, you get out of the Uber, you take the blindfold off, you don't know where you are. Context in that situation might be, well, where did I come from? Where is, what, like, what other towns are around me? What's in this town? What can I do in this town that might either give me an idea of where I am or just kind of something to go off of so I can at least plan my next steps? That's exactly what build context is. It's providing your widget a means to get more information such that it can determine its next steps um, depending on the, you know, what you're doing in it, right? I also want to note that this is for uh, vertical location, not horizontal location. So if you imagine a tree, I don't have a picture of a tree here. Let me see if I can find one. So if we imagine this tree here, right? We have our main app the, or the container. Maybe that's within the one single widget, like on a page or something like that. And then we have a row, we have some columns, we have a container text. So build context is giving us information about the, the vertical location, not horizontal. So this text right here, right? Oh, I can't click on that. But this text right here on the bottom left isn't able to know, like context won't give it information about this text over here on the far right. But what it will do is it will look and say, oh, your parent is this container and its parent is this column and then row and then container, so on and so forth, however long that goes. So you can get information about the vertical location of a widget in the tree, just not horizontal. So that's kind of important to know. As simple as that sounds, I promise it's actually that simple. There's really not much else to build context. It's essentially just where am I? And that's it. It's just a way to get information. Kind of the way that I've seen it is that it's really just an argument that you're going to pass into a method that just gives that method it's information that it's looking for for whatever it's doing behind the scenes within Flutter. So I'll give you an example. And this is actually the common gotcha that I want to talk about. So let's say in this first, uh, in this first example, I have two of them. In this first one here, we have a scaffold and then we have a container followed by a button. Oh, whoops. Followed by, oh, I'm going to do that. Hold on followed by a button and then when you hit that button basically what happens is you get this this snack bar that kind of pops up right and I'm also going to show you all this um, working correctly so um, so what happens is that the the context here in this build method that we're passing in is the context of preferences screen state or I guess also a preferences screen perhaps However, the context of what the build method returns, so in this case, a new scaffold widget, is not the same, which can be kind of confusing because what happens then is that if you try to call something, for example, down here, when we have this floating action button, we have this on pressed event handler, and we're saying when it's pressed, show this scaffold, or look at the, like, we want to show a snack bar when it's pressed. And so we're basically saying, 
look at the scaffold of this particular widget, so the context. So look at where we are right now, and then find the scaffold that belongs to us, and then based on that, show this snack bar. But the problem is that this, this scaffold that it's looking for is going to go up to our preference, preferences screen state, or preferences screen context, and it's gonna look for this scaffold in there. But that doesn't have any scaffold in this particular example. What has the scaffold is this scaffold right here, what's returned by the build method, right? In which case we get an error. However, there is a solution to this. And that solution, whoops, that solution is that we use what's called a builder function or a builder widget, sorry, not a function. We use the builder widget, which is something that honestly up until now, I didn't really pay much attention to, but now I see it's real value, or I don't know if this is its real value, but I see a lot of value in it, which is basically the ability to change the context that you're referring to for a given widget or something like that. So now what we have is that in this build method up here, in our prefer preferences screen states build method, this build context that we're still passing in is still the context of preferences screen. However, what we're doing down here is with using the build method, we're basically saying whatever the context is currently within our, our widget, forget about it. For right here, just forget about it. And instead, build this new widget with a different context. So, in reality what's happening, and now we can go to the code, also, by the way, side note, I'm trying a new style where I already have the code written. So let me know down in the comments below now, what do you guys think of this new style? Is the code already written better for you guys or do you want me to type it out as I'm going? Also, while you're down there leaving that comment, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. Okay, so essentially what we can do, and we can go over to my preferences screen right here. You can see that we have our little float button right there. Essentially what we can do is we can actually rename this context then. We can say preferences, whoops, preferences screen, does that work? No, it doesn't work. Does that work? Yeah, okay, I have to have a lowercase. Preferences screen context, so that we can more clearly see what we're referring to here. And we can also do the same here because that's essentially what's going on. We'll save that, it's updated here, and watch what happens. If I hit this button, watch, wait, watch what we get. I'm gonna hit this button right now, and we get an error. The error says, the co whoops, the context used was preferences screen. So it's not even telling us about this, it's just telling us what the context belongs to, the context of what, and that's exactly what we were expecting. The context that's passed into the build method is the context of the widget calling it, not of what the build method is returning. And that is the most common gotcha that's hard for people. I don't know if it's hard for people to get, but it was a little confusing for me. And it's, in my opinion, not the most obvious thing in the world. Now, let's try something else. Let's come down here. We will actually just delete this because we don't really need it. And we can bring this up. This is the second version of what we're doing right now. We'll change this here. We'll hit save, clear that, and this should be good. This context here now, still we have to say, whoops, we still have to say what it is, which is the preferences screen context. Perfect. However, we aren't going to copy it and paste, I just copied it, but we're not going to paste it somewhere else down here where we had it before. We don't have to do that because now what's happening, and maybe this is a little bit easier to read. Now what's happening is that we're using our builder function or our builder widget to essentially reassign the context or to assign a different context to this floating action button. So here what's happening is that this should be called, let's say, uh, build or return build return context maybe, build returned context. Okay, we'll copy that, we'll paste that here. And now let's see if we get a different outcome. When I hit this button, it still doesn't work. 
All right, so we've changed all these things. The next thing that we have to do is because we had that error, we have to restart the state, kind of like a hard restart. So I'll sign back in. We'll hit that. We go over back to our preferences page. And when we hit this button, now everything works and it properly comes up. And the reason is exactly what I was demonstrating here, which is that we're now using a different context, which we can see here from renaming the names to actually see the different contexts that we're using more clearly instead of calling everything context. So that allows us to do things such as this scaffold of thing, which is essentially, I believe, an inherited widget, which is basically saying, hey, find me the scaffold of myself. So it's going to look up the tree, find the scaffold of where you are right now, the scaffold that in the tree belongs or that is controlling you, I guess I should say, and then it will go and act upon it, right? It will use that in whatever it's doing. And if you've ever used theme.of, so if you've ever set, I believe I have, do I not? I'll make a new video on that then. I believe, so if you, you can set like a theme in your, um, in your app.dart page or app.dart file, which is the, you know, the main file. And then you can basically use that theme of thing so that you can essentially use those colors or whatever it is that you're setting your theme. You can use them everywhere throughout your application instead of having to go and, you know, get the hex values or whatever it is and do that kind of conversion like you'd normally have to do with colors for Flutter. So that's kind of, hopefully that made sense. Uh, that's, that's basically how build context works. It's actually doing a lot for you. Like it's doing a ton of work for you. But in terms of actually using it, it's pretty simple. And in terms of knowing how it works, it's probably even simpler. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below. And also tell me in the comments, did you like the video or not? Or if you have another idea or suggestion for a video, let me know down below. Also, if this topic isn't really making sense to you still, again, let me know down below and I'll try and explain it a little bit better. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Peace.